Why did the Russian lunar rover Lunokhod 1 suddenly disappear from the scene? What do we know about the mysterious whereabouts of the vehicle that made history on November 17, 1970? And why did the moon escape a nuclear attack by a hair's breadth? Are you ready to learn the disturbing truth about the legendary space race? Then stay tuned till the end to see for yourself. Acclaimed Finish Line On July 21, 1969, the United States sank into a boundless frenzy of joy. As is well known, this was the day Neil Armstrong became the first man in history to set foot on the dusty surface of the moon. An event steeped in history that was perfectly staged by the media and eagerly awaited by 500 million people watching on television. It's a small step for man, but a giant leap for mankind. After Armstrong had spoken these legendary words, it was clear. The West had won the prestigious race into space. The cosmic finish line had been crossed. The Soviet Union had finally been put in its place technologically. Reaching a comparable milestone seemed simply unimaginable. But what NASA didn't know at the time was that while the West's gaze was fixed on the acclaimed Apollo 11 mission, Soviet scientists were working flat out on a breathtaking surprise that would be unleashed the very next year. Moscow was to make space history with the mission of the revolutionary Lunokhod 1 lunar rover, and by no means for the first time. Sputnik 1 and Yuri Gagarin So we should keep in mind that in 1957, a massive shock had gone through the American society. At that time, on October 4th, the Soviet Union had succeeded in launching the first artificial Earth satellite, Sputnik 1, into space. The fact that the West, with its democracy and free market economy, had been outdone by the hated communism triggered a serious identity crisis. We were not as superior to the East as we thought. How could it be that the Soviet Union trained three times more engineers than the United States? While today we associate the space race primarily with astronauts, satellites, and rockets, we should not forget that the so-called Sputnik shock also had an extreme impact on U.S. education policy. In order to close the technological gap with the East, the government stoked a billion-dollar package, which was sometimes used to train teachers, build new schools, and award thousands of scholarships. Furthermore, the curricula were given a new focus. Home economics subjects were unceremoniously eliminated and replaced by mathematics, chemistry, and physics. However, the corresponding measures took time to bear fruit, which is why the Soviets achieved several more remarkable space milestones in the years following the Sputnik shock. In November 1957, the dog Laika was the first living being to be launched into Earth orbit. On April 12, 1961, the cosmonaut became the first human being in history to leave our blue home planet behind and set off into the vastness of space aboard the Vostok rocket. One round trip around the Earth later, Gagarin landed in the Russian Volga region and had inflicted the next humiliation to the West. The Intermediate Stations Where desperate actionism meets a lack of knowledge of space is the note John F. Kennedy sent to his Vice President, Lyndon B. Johnson on April 20, 1961. After a failed Bay of Pigs invasion attempt and Yuri Gagarin's maiden flight into space, Kennedy knew that the United States was under a massive pressure to move. Thus, in the aforementioned message, he asked, can we beat the Soviets by building a laboratory in space, or by flying around the moon, or by a rocket that will take a man to the moon and back? So it came to pass that the original race to space was replaced by a race to the moon. Accompanied by a massive, deliberately staged media frenzy, the preparations and developments of the next few years were to be hyped up, and the engineers and astronauts celebrated as superhuman superheroes. Fundamentally, however, the following stages of the cosmic race resembled an open exchange of blows. Alan Shepard became the first American in space and cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman to leave Earth. In 1965, Alexei Leonov stayed outside the spacecraft for the first time. Secured only by a tether, he completed the first extravehicular activity in history. 
The date of the first lunar landing is again 1966. However, this was an unmanned mission in which the Soviet probe Luna 9 touched down on the surface of the satellite. A year later, the United States suffered a catastrophic setback. Astronauts Edward White, Roger Chaffee, and Gus Grissom died in a fire aboard the Apollo 1 command module. As mentioned at the outset, the race into space ended in the media's perception on July 21, 1969. But although Moscow subsequently scrapped the top-secret plans for its manned lunar programs, this did not mean that the list of space milestones stopped at this point. On the contrary, in 1970, Earth's steady companion welcomed a visitor it had never seen before, the first rover to explore an alien celestial body. Lunacod 1 After entering lunar orbit on November 15, 1970, the Luna 17 spacecraft touched down two days later on the regolith-covered exterior of the Earth satellite. After landing in the so-called Mare Imbrium, the probe then released its special cargo. A 2.3-meter-long, trough-shaped lunar rover, Lunacod 1, equipped with eight wheels. In the 11 months that the vehicle spent on the moon in total, it covered a good 10.5 kilometers, took more than 20,000 photographs, and analyzed more than 500 soil samples. Equipped with the most advanced instruments of its time, the rover had six cameras, a so-called penetrometer for ground reconnaissance, a beam detector, and various velocity and distance meters. To supply Lunacod 1 with the necessary energy, engineers equipped it with solar cells built into the hinged lid. However, Lunacod 1 did not operate autonomously. It was mainly controlled remotely from Earth by a crew of five. To navigate the lunar surface, the experts used the rover's cameras. However, they faced some basic complications. First and foremost, the time delay in data transmission. For example, it took 2.6 seconds before the Lunacod 1's motors could react to an obstacle that the terrestrial scientists had spotted on the screen. To prevent the vehicle from crashing or falling over, the rover was equipped with special sensors capable of autonomously detecting deep slopes and other obstacles. Cosmic Missing Case Originally, this groundbreaking mission was supposed to last only three months, but in the end, this period was almost quadrupled and extended to October 4, 1971, the 14th anniversary of Sputnik 1. In fact, however, the end of the mission was not based on a controlled abort, but a technical defect. For example, Lunacod 1 failed because the heat dissipation of the polonium had failed. Since the heating of the instruments could no longer be guaranteed during the bitter cold lunar nights, the rover finally froze. From then on, however, the whereabouts of the lunar rover resembled a cosmic mystery. For almost 40 years, no one knew exactly where the vehicle had come to halt. The following news, therefore, seems all the more bizarre. In 1993, Lunacod 1 was to be auctioned off together with its landing platform. The highest bidder who won the auction for $68,500 was not particularly bothered by the fact that the location of his latest bargain was unknown. In this regard, the catalog of the New York auction house Sotheby's merely stated that Lunacod 1 is currently on the lunar surface. How the owner took the news, which hit the headlines in March 2010, is not known. All that is certain is that NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter probe finally succeeded in rediscovering the lost rover at that time. At the same time, the lunar probe was also able to determine why experts had not succeeded in the past in tracking down Lunacod 1 with the help of its laser reflectors. They had miscalculated its actual position and instead searched several kilometers away. Lunar Nuclear Strike At this point, we should briefly recall that the space race took place during the Cold War era. Even if there was no direct war between the USA and Soviet Union at that time, the aim was to humiliate the hated competitor in every possible way and to determine one's own superiority. Even away from the proxy wars in Korea, Vietnam, and Afghanistan, the saber-rattling of the superpowers took on even more megalomaniac features. And indeed, the fierce competition, which affected so many aspects, almost led to an atomic explosion on the moon. 
That something like the Project A119 existed at all, however, became known to the world public only in the 90s. At that time, the writer Kay Davidson worked on a biography about Carl Sagan. In the course of his research, Davidson found out that the U.S. astronomer had been involved in the A119 project in the late 1950s. As a result, ex-NASA employee Leonard Riefel also turned to the public. He confirmed that he and Sagan had been involved in the planning and revealed some explosive details of the research. But what was behind this insane project? And why on earth does one come at all on the idea to bombard the moon with nuclear weapons? Well, you already guessed it. It should be once again a demonstration of power and the proof of our own superiority. Therefore, the researchers were looking for ways to bring about a nuclear explosion on the lunar surface so powerful that it could be seen from Earth. But while the experts were ranting about the explosive power required, the location of the detonation and the dust cloud that would be created, an illuminating thought occurred to them. Maybe it wouldn't go over so well with the public if we launched a nuclear strike on the moon. In addition, there was a danger of a technical defect during the launch of the rocket and the explosive device becoming a devastating boomerang. Last but not least, the radioactive consequences of the moon bombing would have made future missions more difficult or even impossible. But what did the US government actually say after the background of Project A119 came to light? Well, nothing. To this day, the government denies any involvement in the research series. It is true that the first volume of the project study was released as a result of an official request. However, mysteriously, the remaining volumes were to be destroyed. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our video. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date from now on. What do you think about the thrilling space race and the deployment of the Lunacod 1 lunar rover? And did you know the United States was toying with the idea of bombing the moon?